Towards the end of the video last week, I asked y'all for some hot chicken recommendations while I'm in Nashville. Let's take a look at some of your messages. So the first three messages I've got include suggestions for ramen places, two of which recommend a place called Otaku, and Gabe and Grace raved about their chicken bao, which is like a hot chicken flavor. I really appreciate these suggestions, I'm sure they're great, but I feel like coming to Nashville to eat ramen is like going to Italy for compound chicken. So after waiting for a few messages to show up, I finalized the list of places to visit. Just to mention, during the taste test of this one, an extreme amount of emotion will be shown. Oh my god, I don't know what to do. This is, what the hell, man? I apologize in advance. <laughs> Please, chicken! The first place is also the most suggested, it's called Prince's Hot Chicken. It's at this food court on Broadway Street where all the live music and alcohol are. Seems like they only do chicken tenders here, so I did the four piece with honey mustard. I found myself a little sunny spot by the balcony. Let's give it an aesthetic inspection. The sauce seems to be well coated, and it looks like they use starch or some type of starch mixture instead of just pure flour. But any type of white powder will enhance the experience in my book. Let's give it a taste and rate 1 to 10. It took me a while to say anything because this is so dry that it's kind of choking me a little bit. It looks really juicy on the outside because the oil is literally glistening in the sun. But as soon as I put my mouth on it, it dries up immediately. So it's pretty much the usual experience. I guess it's not so much a cardboard, it's more like a corn. But not so much the ear, more like the husks. So this is supposedly the best fried chicken in Nashville. Not a great start. I'm kind of concerned, guys. I feel like I rarely give other people's cooking low scores on this channel, but this one is a 4 out of 10. Maybe this ain't the right location where I ordered the wrong thing, but look how dry this is. Also, a quick note on Broadway Street. For some reason, when you walk on this street, you get the urge to drink. <laughs> Isn't this awesome? It's like the Times Square for Republicans. Our next spot is called Puckets, and I'm feeling a little betrayed by you guys from the last place. I did some of my own research. The reviews on Google are overwhelmingly good. I only found one bad one. So apparently Puckets, a place well known for its barbecue and fried chicken, has a substandard veggie plate. I mean, I avoid vegetables by default, so we don't need to worry about that. Since we already had princess earlier, I was gonna eat something else besides chicken for dinner, but I ended up coming here anyways. My exact words were, it, let's go to Puckett's. This place is really empty, and by the arrangement of sauces here, I assume this is more like a barbecue restaurant. The menu confirms my suspicion. The Tennessee favorites contains no signs of Nashville hot chicken with chicken fried chicken. Their main focus here seems to be low and slow. I was just wondering why they gave us so much free butter on the table. It's cause their whipped cream is 75 cents a quart. What a steal, it's stock up. With my dad still missing, I'm gonna have to mix it with water to have milk. Here's the half bird southern style fried chicken with mashed potatoes and coleslaw on the side. I clearly asked for collard greens, but whatever. Super flaky crust, kinda look like KFC. I think I just split it open this thigh in the worst way possible with skin all on one side and meat on the other side. Let's even it out a little bit, give it a taste and rate 115. Besides the obvious crunch and juiciness, it's very well seasoned, both the batter and the meat inside. You can almost taste the buttermilk. I don't really care about the bread, so let's move on to the next dish. So this is the country fried steak. It's really similar to the fried chicken, but with beef top round, I believe. It's probably my favorite dish in the southern cuisine. And overall, fried beef is just so underrated. The general opinion is that you need to taste the flavors of the beef from simple grilling and salt and pepper. But I don't like the flavors of the beef, man. I want it deep fried and covered in gravy. So as you can see here, the structural integrity of the crust is kind of crumbling apart, but the tenderized beef, gravy, the crunchy texture combined with the creamy mashed potato, best dish of the day. But the boiled broccoli on the side is turning me off a little bit though. And every dish comes with this pancake thing. Let's give it a try. Never mind. Arnold's is the locals' favorite. I saw on their website that they change their menu every day, but the reviews on Google are consistently good. After walking in, I couldn't understand what's going on, but apparently behind this wall, there's like a cafeteria assembly line where the nicest lady you'll ever meet with a southern accent will offer you up these plastic containers of 
food on red ice and mostly empty hotel pans of fried food. It's a pretty good experience. I didn't go to high school with a cafeteria, so this is much what it feels like. It's even better without people turning me upside down and shaking me till all the quarters fall out of my pants pocket. I don't really want this meat, so I got a full plate of fry stuff, collars, cornbread, and a piece of pie. And this whole McDonald's tray full of food is only $17. You can also ask for these additional condiments for a quarter. What the hell's chow chow? My only complaint is that there's no tapio. Country fry stick with gravy, fried grouper fish with tartar sauce, cornbread, collards, and a piece of chest pie. Is chest pie chestnut pie? This is actually chicken fried chicken and gravy. It's looking oddly wholesome. To be honest, I am a little sketched out by this school cafeteria setup, but the food looks amazing and the price is redeeming, so let's get to eating. So I think I'm slowly starting to understand what's chicken fried chicken. A chicken fried steak is a piece of beef prepared as you would to cube steak, tenderized, and then dip in the fried chicken batter and fried like a piece of chicken. Chicken fried chicken is a piece of chicken breast, tenderized as you would to cube steak, and then fried as normal. So the difference of a fried chicken and chicken fried chicken is in the tenderizing process and the topping off with gravy. But if I could, I'll top everything off with gravy. Just like that episode on Conan where he went to the Sofu restaurant. I used the urinal about 10 minutes ago and gravy came out. But anyways, let's get back to this plate. This is the best chicken fried chicken I've ever had. I mean, this is my first time having it, but it's so well seasoned and you can taste the care that goes into it. And the collars are amazing as well. It kind of makes me feel like I'm at a friend's house and their parents are extremely hospitable and skilled. This must be the peak of Southern comforting cuisine. And the people here are so damn nice too. The restaurant is technically closed, but I'm just hanging out and eating my food here and filming. The batter of this grouper is extremely flaky. Let's dip in the tartar sauce and give it a taste. Not at all greasy. To be honest, this is better than the Gordon Ramsay fish and chips restaurant in Times Square. If I haven't been eating fried food for the past two days, I will kill a whole platter just of these fish. After tasting the chest pie, I still can't tell what it is but it does remind me of a stop and shop. The cornbread tastes homemade, a lot better than Jiffy's. What a great place. Everything I've tasted so far is fresh and delicious. I kind of feel bad now for placing such harsh judgment on it earlier. If I live near this place, I'll be here every single day as soon as it opens. And at this point in the video, I realized I've been in Nashville for two days now and haven't been to a single place where they serve the classic Nashville hot chicken. So we've had Southern fried chicken, uh, spicy cardboard and chicken fried chicken. So if I don't show some traditional hot chicken soon, you guys are gonna start accusing me of clickbaiting. We've arrived at Hattie B's. There's nothing more of a guarantee than this. Almost all of you mentioned this place, except for Sarah, she told me to avoid it, but I don't really trust her after her claim of Prince's being the best. As you can see on their menu, you can get whatever part of the bird you want. I'm just gonna go for a small dark and a small white. And after picking that, you can choose your heat level. I'm gonna go with a mild and uh, shut the clock up. On my ride out of the airport, my Uber driver warned me about it. He said when he first moved out here, he had it once and his mouth hurt for two days straight. So we have to give it a try. I ordered two small darks with potato salad and coleslaw. We're looking at a mild lead quarter with their house spice mix, mostly cayenne. It's kind of loud right now, so you can't really hear the crunch, but you gotta take my word for it. is explosively juicy and flavorful throughout and the outside crust is soaked with that spice oil mix i can't really taste any particular spice which is good because they're all working really well together this is probably the best fried chicken i've ever had in my life my only complaint is that it's not really salty enough i'm starting to salivate editing this footage i'll give it a 9.8 out of 10. hattie b is definitely not a tourist trap it's legit okay here we go attempting to eat the shut the clock up at hattie b at first glance, this thing is red. It's covered in that hot red oil of cayenne, habanero, and I think ghost pepper. I feel like you can even see the crushed up pepper seeds distributed throughout. And before it breaks my spirit, I'm gonna break its leg. It feels just as crunchy and juicy as the mild one. I guess the frying method is the same. So let's cautiously proceed by giving it a taste and rating it 1 through 10. Oh my god, this is like, uh, the top of my head, 
hurts. There's like no flavor in there. All you taste is pain. Oh my god. Like my my hand froze because I don't know what to do right now. This sensation. No way. Oh, fuck off. Oh. I don't know what to do. This is, what, what the hell, man? It doesn't even taste good. That's the thing. Let me give it another shot. All right, hit me, baby, one more time. Oh, man. Oh, here it comes. I can taste the flavor now, at least. It tastes pretty good. All right. It's actually starting to taste really good now. The first bite fucking killed me, bro. Well, at least that's over. It only lasted about 30 minutes, the pain. Obviously, I'm not full from one piece of fried chicken, but I cannot eat anymore. I'm in desperate need of a cool down. And here are some options that I found that might help you if you ever attempt this. Here's the gooey cake batter ice cream from Jenny. Half a quart of it is like trying to pee on a burning house. It's not working. So I found another place with these over-the-top extravagant milkshakes from Legendary. But there's like a wordplay on dairy. You know what I mean. And to celebrate the fact that I did it, I went back in line and got this. I actually just got invited to a fashion brand launch party in Soho. Now I know what to wear. This is a cooking channel and this video is about food review, so I'll make it as subtle as possible. After I shut the clock up, I played through a brand new mobile game while I remained seated in the bathroom, if you catch my drift. For a solid four hours, the existence of my aim has never been more apparent. And our last place is also a popular suggestion, Party Foul. I love that there are parking spots everywhere in the city. It's about a little bit past 11 a.m. on a Tuesday, so what are these people doing here? So similarly structured as Hattie B's, you can choose the way you want your chicken and the heat level. And the highest level is called Poultry Gist. Sounds like racism towards birds. I couldn't bring myself to do it again, so I got the mild. This one looks like it has significantly less batter, but somehow it appears to be crispier. And there's a little bit of hair here and there to add to the appetite. I'm gonna take a bite exactly where it is so I don't need to look at it anymore. It's extremely crispy and juicy, but again, not much flavor going on except for spiciness. Not enough salt, no signs of pepper, and I feel like there's no garlic powder or anything like that. So it kind of tastes like unmarinated chicken dipped in cayenne oil. I think this might be the biggest disappointment considering how good it looks. I don't know what's going on. Is there not supposed to be any salt in the oil or is my taste buds rigged? And the breast is deceivingly dry. I'm rarely critical of restaurants on this channel, but this trip has been quite interesting. More disappointments than I expected. I feel like a lot of the fried chicken spots in New York City are way better. I even tasted better fried chicken from fast food chains. I'm just gonna assume I showed up to all these places in the wrong time. Anyways, that'll be it for the video. Overall, I enjoyed Nashville a lot. People here are extremely friendly, the weather's warm, and a little bit windy, which is perfect. And that five daughter bakery donut thing is pretty incredible. And I'll be stopping by Dallas, Texas before I go back to New York. I will only be consuming barbecue there, so if you know any good spots, send me a DM. Alright, thank you.